modern world is a world in which business plays an important part. Office buildings and office workers are a familiar sight in every city and town. So is the office secretary. That alert, efficient person who plays such a vital role in the world of business. This is Jean Carroll. Her day begins at 9 o'clock, and she's at her desk on time. Promptness, neatness, orderliness. In her first minute, Jean has displayed these attributes of a good secretary. Office supplies are the tools with which Jean works. The orderly arrangement of her desk permits a quick check to see that she has enough supplies on hand for the day. She takes out only those things she knows she needs. With her place of business in order, she helps to organize the day for herself and her employer by referring to her invaluable calendar pad and from it typing up the daily appointment sheet. This record indicates the names of various people who have appointments for the day. It also lists memorandums or personal reminders for her employer. The record is placed on Mr. Williams' desk before he arrives. The new arrival is Marge Quinn, office stenographer and Jean's co-worker. Now, let's clear up this distinction between a stenographer and a secretary. A stenographer takes dictation, transcribes and types. She may also do billing and filing and operate office machines such as a duplicator or calculator or transcribing machine. At times, she may also operate the switchboard. A secretary assumes much more responsibility than a stenographer and performs many duties that contribute to the success of the company, as we shall see. The calendar pad helps Jean to keep track of her many responsibilities and to establish a regular schedule. At about the same time each day, the morning mail is distributed. Sorting it is one of Jean's responsibilities. She selects the unopened personal letters for Mr. Williams from the business mail which was opened in the mail room. Mr. Williams has instructed her to open all his personal mail. The care and precision with which she handles this routine assignment are again indicative of Jean's thoroughly competent approach to her job. This takes a little longer than simply zipping the letters open, but it minimizes the dangers of tearing the contents or accidentally throwing away a loose enclosure. And of course, enclosures are no longer loose after they've passed through Jean's hands. In checking through the business mail, she finds a letter which refers to some previous correspondence. So she gets out the file on this, in case Mr. Williams might want it later. And now the mail is in order. Good morning, Marge. Good morning, Mr. Williams. Good morning, Jean. Good morning, Mr. Williams. I want to talk to Mr. Dubois of Philadelphia. Will you call him for me at uh, 11 o'clock? Why, yes, of course. That's Peter Dubois, isn't it? That's right. And it's very important. Jean makes a note of Mr. Williams' instructions on her calendar pad. The good secretary doesn't rely on memory. Jean will make sure that every item here is taken care of today. Two of them, the itinerary and the checks, can easily be attended to during the morning dictation period. Mr. Williams usually gives dictation at the same time each morning. This period is an important part of Jean's daily routine. She makes sure she has all her materials for taking dictation plus the itinerary, the checks, and the file folder she got out earlier. Leaving Marge to answer the phone and receive any callers, Jean responds quickly. She recognizes her responsibility to conserve her employer's time. It's another essential part of her job. For all her other duties, taking dictation and transcribing her notes is Jean's most important responsibility, the foundation of secretarial skill. During the dictation period, Mr. Williams often takes up other questions of the day, makes suggestions, and gives impromptu instructions. 
The secretary, too, uses this period to clarify any matters that need attention, so that she need not bother him later. Foresight, such as bringing the file which she thought he would need. Dependability in attending to many personal and business details, such as making sure he signs checks. These are qualities which make the secretary a real asset to her employer. There you are. Now about this itinerary for my trip to Toronto. I've decided to stop off at Cleveland on my way back. That will be on the 28th. Can you rearrange this to allow me a day there? Very well. I'll check on hotel and train reservations. I think that will be all for now, Jean. Oh, uh, by the way, I saw Mr. Carl. He won't be in this afternoon. Uh, make his appointment for uh, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Jean leaves the office without delay. Now she can revise her schedule and bring it up to date. On the calendar pad, she checks off the items that have been taken care of. The appointment with Mr. Carl is canceled. It becomes the first item on the next day's schedule. For organizing her work is a continuing process from day to day and week to week. The checks have been signed and the itinerary must be revised. The itinerary is a schedule of times and places that make up a trip. A hotel guide will supply the information Jean needs to arrange for Mr. Williams to stay overnight in Cleveland. Knowing where to look for information and how to use it is part of Jean's job. The secretary should be familiar with standard reference books like these. By mid-morning, Jean is well along with her transcribing. This period is another part of her very day. But she is also receptionist to customers, friends, job applicants, and salesmen. Jean knows how her employer wants her to handle these different kinds of callers. In every case, she is tactful, courteous, and poised. Since she cannot admit this salesman now, she makes an appointment for him for the next morning. The secretary's manner of handling callers directly influences their attitude toward the business. The unexpected caller receives as courteous treatment as does Mr. Richards, who has an appointment. Callers, whether expected or not, usually interrupt other work, but Jean loses no time getting back to her organized routine. Call Peter Dubois. Yes, proper use of the telephone is another must for a good secretary. Long distance, please. I want Philadelphia, Quaker 1200, Mr. Peter Dubois. The last name is spelled D U B O I S. Mr. Arthur J. Williams at Center 9000 is calling. Not only does the secretary maintain a pleasant relationship with her employer and his business associates, but she must be able to get along with her co-workers and occasionally give instructions to subordinates and supervise their work. Jean is able to tell others what to do because she knows from experience what is required. Having been a general office worker before she became a secretary, she's familiar with other phases of office work, and she's always willing to help a fellow worker. Consideration for others is an important factor in good office manners. Jean has carried through her daily routine very thoroughly and has kept up with her schedule. As a result, even a late interruption, like an unexpected call for dictation, can be handled smoothly. In this office, there's no frantic last-minute rush to wind up the day's work. Jean is still at top efficiency. Even under pressure of getting out a last-minute letter, she is calm and courteous. Goodwill and understanding are part of her personality, part of her job. Now, with the rush letter transcribed and signed, she winds up her day in a neat, orderly manner. The routine of one day carries over into the next. Before Jean leaves, 
she has a clear picture of what she is going to do tomorrow. Alert, personable, efficient. Our secretary leaves at the end of the day with a sense of accomplishment and of pride in her contribution to the world of business in which she plays such an important part.